Does anyone else, uh, any similar situation where you can just admit to yourself that you couldn't do it? Yeah, I've got one. You got one? Okay. Yeah, that I didn't want to recall, of course. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, it's tough. This is really tough to talk about, actually, because, you know, it's, it's kind of a taboo subject, choking, and, uh, but we got we to gotta talk about it. Um, yeah, what happened there, Zumi? Yeah, so I was playing singles against, um, you know, somebody who was, um, you know, we, we talked about um, somebody, uh, some of the players who looked like a who. Who, who's like a wall, right? Every, mm -hmm. every you know, shot you, you um, hit, they would just dink it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so it was one of those players. Um, she runs around a lot um, and just get every ball back with, with no power and no, you know, no finesse. So I was like, okay, I'm skill level. I'm probably better than her. So I should be able to ma win this match, right? So we started yeah. like two sets and I had it. And then it went on to, I think, tie break, and I lost the tie break in the match. So that was, that was really devastating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. So what, what happened? So what were you feeling? What, what were you, um, what were you really thinking about when you were trying to finish that match? Like, uh, what happened there? You know, you got, you got I mean, looking back, um, you go, you go into a negative spiral, right? You miss a shot and right. you're like, oh gosh, you know, I should be doing this, that, and the other. And then I miss another shot and it's like spiraling down, down, down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it just kind of got in a bad rut. The momentum right. kind of shifted and right. you just kind of dwelled, right? I guess right. on the past. Right, and you know that, you know, at, at, the, at even the tie break, if I had won, at say, you know, I was down maybe four, three or three, I think I was down three, four. Mm -hmm. I, it was my serve. If I had gotten it to like five, four, um, then the match would have, you know, I could have gotten the momentum back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are very critical points. I mean, especially in the tiebreaker, like one point mm -hmm. can really decide it all, you know, the, the momentum. Yeah. So that's, yeah, well, that's tough. That's, oh, well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Zumi. I know it's, these are tough things to uh, really talk about here. It's about um, hurting pride as well. <laughs> yeah, it hurts your pride, um, you know, and, you know, choking, it, it's not really about your opponent, right? Your opponent could be playing better, but it, it feels like you're in control and something, something happens within yourself that uh, you lose control. You just lose control of just basic shots, like a volley in, into the court. Like the court is really spaced. It's really big, really. So, um, and then you just can't put it in. So it's, it's crazy. Um, anyone else with um, other experiences? Doesn't have to be tennis related. Could be something else entirely. Um, for me, I've never oh. experienced uh, like choking, but I've seen like my teammates do it before. Oh, okay. So like when I was playing basketball, like my freshman year, uh -huh. um, we were playing against um, like um, we were playing against American at the time, uh -huh. and um, like the game was tied, and there was like a couple seconds left on the clock, and he got fouled, mm -hmm. and then he was our best player at the time. So like we're like, oh, it's, everybody on the bench is like, oh, it's automatic, like he's gonna make the yeah. And then he ended up um, missing both of them, and the game just got sentenced to overtime, and then like. Um, we ended up winning, but then at the end of the game, we were like asking him what happened. He was just like, I don't know. It was just, I just felt like a lot of pressure. Cause I guess like that's the first yeah. time he's ever been like in that kind of pressure situation. Like, as uh -huh. a player. so he never really uh, knew how to deal with like that kind of pressure. So like, it was really tough for him to like execute and like make the free throws. So was he a really good free throw shooter yeah, already? He was, he was. During practice, he was always automatic. And during the games, regularly, like regularly wow. during the games, he would make them all the time. But it was just like, I guess, the pressure of like, uh -huh. like the stakes yeah. of like, if I make these free throws, I win the game, I guess, like, it yeah. got to them, so. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very typical, actually, free throw shooting, especially at the end of the, the game there, when you got to make at least one. And, you know, I've seen Steph Curry miss free throw shooting, and he's a legendary free throw shooter. He's, he's missed uh, some, some big ones here and there. Obviously, he's a champion, though, so. That's okay, but um, you know I can totally understand that feeling. What 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 did he did he say anything else about that experience? Like why? No, he was just saying that like he was overthinking like 
-hmm. he said that he couldn't even do his um regular like free throw routine like to come because mm -hmm. you usually do it to calm yourself down right yeah yeah but he was saying that he couldn't uh he couldn't even focus enough to like get his free throw routine down so he did like a completely different routine that like threw it off oh okay. that's what that's, that's, he was overthinking it too hard wow that's that's well so he actually changed his routine up yeah. so that's really that'll just destroy everything that's um it's a precursor to uh you know miss shots you know so that's good so thanks thanks ryan for sharing that um anyone else anyone else have experiences your own or you saw a friend choke you know that's okay well i'll share um, one of my couple experiences that I had, uh, one in tennis. So um, I talked about my high school nemesis, who I've never been able to beat. Um, we'd always be close uh, up to the third set. And at the end of the year tournament, where um, it was the finals, and whoever wins that will go to the state tournament, like the best of the state. And, uh, and that, that, would, that would have been amazing if I had beaten them on that particular final because that that's a super huge important tournament and I was up to love uh, against him at the third set so I was four games away from winning it uh, at that point I was I was dominating him but I had that thought in my head what was like is this really happening is this like can I actually pull this off can I actually do it uh, and once I started thinking about that then um, it, it seemed like my opponent, uh, Derek, just got a little bit better and better. Uh, at that point, I hadn't really thought about it. I was just playing tennis. Um, I was winning points. I was playing well. But then I was like this realization that I might actually beat my nemesis at the end of the year tournament. Uh, it kind of threw me off a little bit. I don't know if I would say I would choke. Uh, maybe I did a little bit. But um up to this day i remember that that's a memory it feels like yesterday that um i remember that you know there's there's a lot of things that happened this year it feels like you know pre-covid time it feels like uh like a lifetime ago uh that memory and that end of the year tournament still feels like yesterday to me and i missed out that opportunity um one was uh, a job interview which i felt like uh you know i I think I was going to get that job, I think. You never really know with the job interviewers, uh, but uh, job interviews are kind of nerve wracking a little bit, at least for me. And so when I went in there in the job interview and they were talking, they were asking me questions, I couldn't articulate as well as I thought I would have. You know, you, in a job interview, you, you want to be very coherent, give out like the best answers, uh, but at that, those interview questions, uh, it weren't, they were really basic questions, but I felt like some questions I was rambling off and some questions I just didn't give a very uh, coherent answer. Like I just babbled, like blah, blah, you know, I couldn't, I talked too fast or something like that. And uh, yeah, I didn't really hear it back from them. So that kind of sucked. So yeah, so those were my experiences as far as choking. So thank you, thanks for um, sharing those experiences there. That kind of helps us kind of understand. And, you know, one of the things that when we try to learn in school and class or anywhere is to try to learn from other people's experiences. So uh, you should learn from your own experience, obviously, but uh, you wanna learn from everyone else. So you really have to be uh, empathetic and, you know, understand um, like, you know, the examples that I've shown, if you really want to learn, like what happened to John McEnroe and Yana Novotna, you have to be really in their shoes. Uh, I picked out the pictures that were the most dejected, right? They were, you know, you could really feel it, you know, just by looking at them, they were down. And you have to really feel that. And then when you're in that situation, you have a, at least a chance to uh, not choke and do the things that you need to do. Learn from their experiences. Okay.